Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Rachel. These are two very interesting and complementary uh, presentations. Uh, by coincidence, both have worked with the World Bank. And for those of you who knew the World Bank of the 1980s, must be surprised. Are uh, these messages from the uh, ex and World Bank staff? But this shows how much even the financial institutions like the World Bank and IMF have changed over time. Now, in discussing this paper, I have uh, a special challenge here because uh, I basically agree with the thrust of the arguments. In fact, when uh, 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 both uh, Justin and uh, Celestine visited Tanzania and we had long discussions on, uh, on uh, this framework, uh, in my institute uh, rapport, where several of us are represented here, we were doing engaging into similar activity of focusing on social economic transformation in such a way that you have inclusive growth. So it came at a very timely uh, moment. Uh, in fact, around the same time, um, we agreed that one of us among the researchers would uh, read carefully the uh, book and the articles on this subject and make a presentation in the seminar. And the presenter, fortunately, is here, Naima Rutatina. I wish she was a discussant because she presented this model to the staff so that we can understand what challenges of transformation we are uh, facing. Uh, but that shows that we, are, we think this is the right way to go. But there are challenges on the way. Uh, and as uh, demonstrated by uh, Celestine Monga, what he sees as a, a preconditions which actually uh, do not uh, I mean, I mean, violate what would have been predicted. It says a lot about what the, the point which uh, Justin emphasized at the beginning, uh, that these are country specific, very sensitive to country specificity in terms of understanding the resource endowment, which it is, the structure of the economy, where it is going. So it cannot, uh, you cannot generalize uh, too much. However, as we know, averages have always challenges. Uh, but averages tells you, tell you a story, but if you take them too literally, you forget that averages actually are made up of uh, diverse uh, uh, indicators. So what indices show hides a lot of uh, details. The one important issue which comes out very clearly is that transformation is specific to country situations, country structures, country endowments, and country decision as what the development agenda uh, is uh, really. And that's why it's very, it's the question which comes across is the risk of coping rather than adapting. Adaptation always means much as you may admire what others have done to succeed, but one must not forget that one has to adapt to the concrete situation prevailing in the country in question. A second issue which I find very uh, useful in our own understanding of, uh, of transformation is bearing in mind comparative advantages in a dynamic context. You cannot divorce uh, from the fact that however much you transform, one must remain competitive in the uh, global economy. Without that, you cannot be sure that the, the kind of uh, uh, advantage, competitive advantage you are achieving is going to last. So I think bearing in mind uh, dynamic comparative advantage uh, is extremely important here. The third issue which, uh, by implication, is there is the centrality of uh, uh, innovations and technological capability building over time. And this cannot be done in a generic manner. 
has been done in the context of the industries and activities in which the country is envisaging to be comp competent. Uh, so I think the, that subject has been uh, uh, not very much in the uh, attention of development economists for some time, the importance of building technological capabilities. Uh, when uh, Raja was telling me that he's a professor of uh, innovation and technological management, I was saying in the world you must be one of the very few, maybe 20 of you remaining, who are addressing that subject. But I think that this discussion here brings that to the center because technology and innovation are at the center of determining the capacity to compete. So the, the, the challenge is to uh, not brush aside the centrality of technological capability building and uh, innovations. The importance of price signals and the market um, is uh, brought to bear. As you rightly pointed out, uh, Justin, in the, in the 70s, uh, many countries of uh, developing countries like ours, which adopted import substitution industrialization, we were actually negating the market. The policies were negating markets rather than actually using uh, markets. When it came to uh, structural adjustment and reforms, the other extreme uh, was adopted, negating the role of the state. Uh, hoping that markets would do everything. So the challenge we are facing now is uh, uh, countries which think that uh, the, the state has uh, no role to play in ensuring that markets actually develop. Market development uh, and the process of actually removing the transaction cost to make markets function efficiently, the, the state has much to play. Uh, there. But the messages which uh, many of our states now have is uh, you are talking of free market, markets function, they, 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 they forget the function of intervening in order to make markets operate more efficiently and therefore the signals uh, can be worth actually making use of when addressing the issues which have been uh, uh, raised here. So the role of the state in ensuring markets develop uh, is uh, uh, something which most of our countries have actually been uh, mis, 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 or rather misled or misled themselves to think that the markets are there to function. Uh, but the role of the state to make markets function is important. You address, uh, both of you, the issue of industrial policy. Uh, this is a, is, a, is a term which once we mention, uh, people get called because they, th they go back to their minds go back to the import substitution industrialization of the 1970s, that that's where we are going back. So the really challenge in policy making is to convince our policymakers that no, we are talking of a different thing, not the same industrial policy of that time, but industrial policy of the current time, taking into account forces of the market forces in providing signals, taking into account competitiveness, it's a very different ball game, and the role of the state is very different now, which is envisaged in this model, uh, compared to what it was. Now, to sell that message is a challenge to all of us. In um, my own country, we are facing that uh, uh, challenge. When we explain it, people immediately remember, oh, those days. No, 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 not those days. The situation is different, circumstances are different. And the... The, 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 the challenge here is really to be able to interpret the transformation in the context of the country's specificity, in the context of the economies of the region, in the context of the global uh, economy, which is very different from the situation we saw in the, in the 70s. Uh, but it requires capabilities of the state, which uh, were destroyed for quite some time, a decade or two, which needed to be built again. And I think this point may not have uh, uh, come out very clearly, the importance of building the capabilities of the state in this direction. Different capabilities from the ones uh, which uh, uh, we experienced in the uh, uh, 70s. I was thinking of the concept of sunset and sunrise industries. And um, qualifying that um, to Avoid the situation where our 
uh, the policy makers will pick sunset industries and hope that they can, uh, that's enough. Uh, it's um, a, 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 a sunset industry, maybe sunset because the maybe wages are rising, factor costs are changing over time. But we have those sunset industries where technology has changed and we may need to leapfrog in order to, to move ahead rather than go through the same the sunset industries. So I hope we can, uh, the analysis of sunset industries will be made in such a way that you, you see in the context of the uh, global competitive economy, is this sunset industry appropriate for my conditions? Or has the technology changed so much that we need to leapfrog uh, uh, and uh, uh, move into, 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 into other industries? So it's just to qualify that not all sunset industries may be good candidates for, uh, for uh, transformation. And I think following this uh, um, model of uh, uh, inducing growth of competitiveness over time, uh, the way uh, many of our countries handle foreign direct investment uh, is like attract as much as possible. And you'll find actually the, the presentations by policymakers proud about, oh, so much FDI was attracted last year. It grew FDI more and more as it's more is always better. But I think the message coming out here is FDI itself has to be strategic and targeted. Not any FDI uh, is necessarily going to cause transformation. A kind of transformation one is intending to undertake goes with the kind of FDI which will facilitate that transformation to take place. So it's a strategic decision as to which FDI to attract uh, and for what purpose in terms of this kind of transformation. So it, it, it is quite uh, uh, informing, I think, uh, that the, the way we look at FDI must be very different uh, indeed. Lastly, on the point about the indicators of corruption, governance, and other good-looking indicators, but which, uh, as Celestine has demonstrated, they do not guarantee the final results. I think that's the, the, the what, what, what is reminding us is each of these indicators has qualitative elements. Corruption. A country which ranks has the same rank does not necessarily mean that they have the same type of corruption. Uh, I don't want to say there is good corruption and bad corruption. <laughs> but I want to say if you are building a road and you have two countries where corruption is taking place, in one country, you find the road has been built, good quality, but maybe it is 10% more expensive. In another country, you find the road is low quality, or maybe it is not built at all. The outcome may be very different. If in each case, one corrupt person. So if you oversimplify the indicator of corruption, it's the same, but how it has influenced what the country wants to do in terms of where it wants to go is very different qualitatively. And the same applies with the uh, governance. That's why one of some of the countries, you, one cites that they have, they have done, they did very well. They say, oh, that's a dictatorship. But they don't cite other dictatorships which have done very badly. Uh, so in, in case, so the, the qualitative aspect of it, uh, if you decide on the main path to transformation. What does governance, what kind of governance is going to take you there or which type is going to divert you from there? It's, uh, the messages can be very different if one goes down to the qualitative aspects of those indicators uh, which are, are shown there. So in that sense, one would not be so much surprised to see that the same level of indicator conveys the same different results. And how, what kind of combination of um, inst policy instruments one uses, how they are sequenced, matters a great deal. That's why when, uh, even those days when uh, uh, strict packages of policy were given and as conditionality, the outcomes in different countries which adopted those policies was very different indeed. 
depending on how the packages were combined, how much they were owned, uh, how much how they were sequenced. So it's so much country specific. I think the message we uh, I take from this is uh, transformation of an economy must be country specific. How you transform depends on the resource endowments, the structure of the economy you have, and what is possible to do. If your country is wanting, like uh, Tanzania, we want to be a gas economy, the kind of transformation required, the kind of skills you develop, the kind of education which you'll, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll be, be giving, the kind of training will be different from another country which wants to become maybe an, uh, particularly an industrial country in some other sector. So it's, uh, the message I take here is uh, country specificity uh, will define the kind of transformation, the kind of um, investment to be made, the kind of transaction costs actually to be addressed. Uh, so if we take this message, the challenges on each one of our countries to uh, adapt the key messages here to their concrete situations. Thank you very much.